Hello and welcome. My name's Chris Can with Mining Journal and with me I have Paul Atherley with Penzana. Penzana is a rare earth element development group initially focused on its Longonjo project in Angola but hoping to build a downstream hub in the north of the UK for processing as well. We've got separate conversations with Paul on the financing and on Longonjo particularly but today we wanted to talk about that downstream processing facility. Hi Paul, welcome. Thanks, Chris. What's driving this decision to build something in the north of the UK? The initial reason was we were going to produce a concentrate and sell that to basically China, and the margins aren't very good on just producing a concentrate. And so then we worked with the Angolans to talk about um, value-adding in Angola to go all the way to a mixed rare-earth carbonate. But much the same thing applies when you get to a mixed rare-earth carbonate. You're there selling it to the existing separation facilities which are predominantly in China, and they control then the downstream feedstock from there, and the margins aren't that good. Where you sort of capture bigger margins is when you control all the way from concentrate through emmerich and then through a, a rare earth oxide. So the decision was initially to look at building the margin, but the second thing that came out of that became increasingly obvious that... Uh, we need to have an independent and resilient supply chain for magnet metal rare earths and not be totally dependent on China. Okay. And what's the interdependence between that raw material extraction, then through the carbonate, then into separation, metallization, and then magnets? Um, do all those things have to line up for it to work? Or have you got options around which parts you actually execute? No, really good question. We can sell a mixed rare earth carbonate, which we call an MREC. We, that's, an, a, that's a marketable product from the mine. We can then build the separation facility at Salt End, and we can have feedstock from Longonjo and from elsewhere. So they're two separate businesses with one feeding into the other initially. And then you mentioned metallization. Once you have a rare earth oxide at Salt End, we have these things, and we call them chemical parks and bad weather. That is, we've got the Sultan Chemical Park, and it's linked to the one of the biggest offshore wind farms in the whole world called Dogger Bank with our HVDC cable. We can draw on that power to actually convert those rare oxides into a, a basic metal. So we have the ability to go from uh, mine to concentrate to MREC to separation, to metallization. Once you get to metallization, it's more complicated, and I'm not sure we would have the ability to go much further than that. And that's where we'd look for what we call magnet partners, partners who would like to take our metal, either in joint venture or buy it from us, and then turn that into the magnets that we need. And that way, we will have created an independent and hopefully resilient um, supply chain for magnet metal rare earths. All the talk these days, Paul, around supply chain security, one would have thought that there would be huge appetite for that within the UK government. Is that what you're seeing? And I suppose the question is, what kind of support have you got, are you expecting from government and strategic parties? Well, the first part of your question is exactly right. It's really important. Surprisingly, and I, I'll admit I didn't know this, but the UK is a net exporter of internal combustion engines. It makes a lot of them. And in fact, it's aiming to convert all those internal combustion engine manufacturers into what's called EDUs, uh, uh, electric drive units. And it's aiming to produce 3 million of them by 2030 and for it to be a major export industry. And the UK government has backed various specialty steel manufacturers to supply that supply chain, supply that industry, those OEMs. And part of that, they're talking to us about, can we be the magnet metal supply chain for that industry. So the the government is very interested. And we saw uh, recently Nusrat Ghani, Minister for the Department of Business Trade. She uh, announced through the uh, uh, Automotive Transformation Fund has given us a, a small grant, around £4 million. But that's a precursor, we think, to further government support in different means to be able to support this, what we think is a really important supply chain for a very, very important industry. Paul, that's all we've got time for today, but thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure.